But since I have my hand in this Hank, I just want to show you this clamp. Hey, what's up, Reefers? Check this out. Look at this little spread. Uh, this is a sign that I'm about to try fragging. I don't frag my corals too often because I like to see how full they look. But the Zoa Garden has really come to um, a size where it's out of room to grow, honestly. I mean, it's, it's next thing is like onto the same bed. And another risk of a uh, big Zoa Garden is that they may start releasing toxins and start doing a little um, uh, territorial battle. And that's just not good for the whole tank. Now, recently my tank has been going through some stuff and one of the suggestions is that maybe it is the Soa Garden releasing toxins. Uh, but just like all these factor together, I figure, you know what? Um, let's frag some corals. So today, I'm hoping to frag some of the sour apples, definitely the other chaos, some of the uh, devil's armor, and we'll see if we can, I can get some of the magicians and sunny D's out. It's gonna be tricky. I was hoping that I can just kind of stick my hand in there and just cut some polyps out, but then it looks a little bit, looks a little bit tight, so I'm not sure. I'm gonna make them shrink up first, uh, close up first, and see how they look. All right, we're just gonna blow some streams of water using my super long turkey baster. This is awesome. I think this from real. Yeah, I want to see chunks that sticks out that I can easily just kind of lop off. Ideally, maybe some even grow onto loose pieces of rock that I put in the middle. I'll try not to touch the grandes too much because the grandes is full of uh, palytoxins. They're pretty potent. And it would be nice if we can get one of these, um, or both of these chopper out. They're just cramp out of room. I don't think they'll be able to multiply much in there. So it'd be nice to get one piece out. And Purple Death is also one that I don't want to mess with too much because they're pretty um, venomous. Is it venomous or poisonous? I know poisonous if you eat them. And there's Baby Neon, just watching that works. I'll try to place him a little bit further so he doesn't see directly under the blue light. All right, look at this, guys. So there's this one little piece of uh, pebble I put in the middle of the Zoa Garden, hoping that things will start growing on it. Uh, this was like maybe two months ago, and looks like some Zoas already uh, got on. So this is great. I'll try to rip it out so that the Zoa stays on. And looks like we got a mix of um, other chaos and um, the devil's armor. Looks like more other chaos, which is great. I'm trying to get some of these magician because they look super awesome, but they're pretty slow growing for me. All right, from this point forward, we may have to do some one-handed operation because this hand's gonna be wet, and we got this little towel right here and the larger one. So, Zoa is something that I don't really mess around with because they have palytoxin. Even though regular Zoa, the amount is not... Oh, it just kind of come off. Oh, perfect. Dude, this is perfect. It's perfect. Let's see. Yeah, we got a couple nice polyps right there. I think this is Devil's Hammer. The rest are the other chaos. This is perfect. Excellent. So this worked out beautifully. Um, yeah, so this is a trick I learned. Just put a little piece of stone or uh, pebbles in the middle of your Zoa garden. And when the Zoa grow on it, you just pull it out. And there you go, instant frag. And right here, did I do more? No, it's not that smart. Um, the other thing I want to check is the sour apple and the jawbreaker. I know the sour apple is a separate rock. I'm gonna just easily, I hope, pull it out. There we go. Let's see what's going on. So, oh, I'm peeling something. Oh, okay, there's a jawbreaker, nice. So here is a nice. I think this is where it initially came from. This is cool. This is the frag plug with the sour apple and somehow the baby jawbreaker walked on it. Let me see, this would be a nice piece to come out. Unfortunately, it's not really clumping up where I can just slice off. I wanna get some of these magician as well, because. A lot of people like them, and it is also one of my um, favorite pallies. I think it's a loose rock. Let me double check. Well, I just broke one off. Okay. And as I break it off, I just peel it down downwards, so we kind of get two. One and a half. So that would work. I'm just going to collect them in the front. Here's purple death that we don't really want to mess with. Okay, let's, let's, let's save this little guy right here. Yeah, you got like one tiny pile of left. What is this? Looks like a sun dancer. So we'll kind of save it right here. This piece of rock is not doing too much at the moment, but I think I'm gonna keep it here. Uh, I think it, it has some nice surface area for the, for the Zoas to jump onto because they're touching, so they can definitely hop on over. 
I think that's all the loose part we can just easily get off. Oh, you know what, guys? This is kind of growing onto the same bit. I can probably... Easy way to just pop them off. It's kind of difficult because it's like at the bottom like this. Uh, maybe I'll just slip a rock in here, let it wait for it to grow onto the rock, and we can just pull it out. So maybe we can use this because it's not doing anything. So we'll, well, let's, let's get rid of the uh, bubble algae first. So some people don't like popping bubble in a tank, but for me it's, well, <laughs> I shouldn't be doing it because I don't have any ammo crap in the display tank at the moment. Um, I actually tr want to invite them back because I'm starting to see bubble algae and then send them to the refugium again once they take care of the problem. Um, so they're essentially just coming for a meal. But when I've ammo crammed the tank, I like to pop them in the tank. Because when the bubble algae spread, they're all really small and that's when the uh, the crab can eat them. When they get a little bit larger, the crab can't seem to handle them and the, the crab will leave them alone. Okay, I'll use this as an example. I try not to cut the zoas at the stem because I feel like it's a little bit harder to heal up. Ideally, I get a little bit of the rock along with the zoas, for example, like here. Here's actually on a frag plug, I just keep the plug and glue it onto another plug. Really meta, I know. Um, or I slice a thin piece of rock that comes along with the zoas, so I don't damage the coral in any way. Uh, but in cases, I have tried cutting the stem, and it, it is okay, but I feel like the healing is a little, takes a little longer. But for now, I kind of just try to find the easiest way, which is... Um, bring a piece of rock with the with the coral. All right, so what we got? We got, oh yeah, we gotta address this, right? So we got some of these guys right here. Sour apple, I think sour apple has some room to grow down this way. I'll probably add another piece of rock right here, but we got a really nice colony of, um, well, mini colony of sour apple, and this is really slow growing for me. Well, since I have my hand in the tank, I figure I'll show you guys some of the other stuff. I got the Space Invader here. This is from Jim, Telegram and Instagram. This is the one that he saved. Um, again, he saved my butt multiple times for when it comes to Space Invader especially. And it's just growing really well. Just clearing out all the bubble algae. And I'm wondering if I should move it to a slightly higher light and higher flow area. It was like in the back corner and it's slowly killing the forest fire digitata as you can see. Um, so I may, maybe I'll move it up a little bit. I don't want to change the position too much because obviously like that spot. Because I was seeing that the bottom portion is receding a little bit. I feel like it's not getting enough light back there. It's always in the shade, so hopefully the new spot will help it. But since I have my hand in this tank, I just want to show you this clam and how large it has gotten. I didn't even realize it grew that much. Look at this. This is the $50 clam from Peco. Uh, a little bit more than a year ago. It was maybe... Maybe like two-thirds this size. It's definitely grown uh, since then. I'm really happy about that. And again, 50 bucks from Peco. It's been eating well, though, with the uh, Riff Nutrition products from chat so this is awesome it's really happy to see this growth this is one of the nice little success story in this tank because i've never had luck with a uh, clam even there is a clam like this before this uh so big thumbs up Moments later. all right so we all ready to go two of choice we got razor blade to slide things off and then we got Super glue, which I use a uh, power blab. I got a bunch of power blab super glue. They're fantastic. And then we got some insta sets. What this does is that once you use super glue and spray this on, immediately hardens, so you don't have to wait. Seems to work really well for me. Um, so highly recommend insta sets. Uh, with any, it works with any uh, any super glue, I believe. Any super glue gel. That's actually really important. Use super glue gel. So we got a couple pieces right here. We got some loose frags from the Tang Island budget nano tank up there. Those are the space monster, I believe. We got some other chaos and we got some sour apple. So we're gonna start putting them onto frag plugs. Frag plugs, I got two different types. One is a traditional type like this. Um, some slightly newer one that uses material that's really porous, almost like marine pure spheres or block. So this will help with bacteria colonization as well. And also, another type that I really like, this, these I believe is actually from Ecotech. Uh, these are the flat ones, it's a hexagon. And it just kind of, they just sit nicely on the sand, like right this. Uh, so for Zoa, where I want to spread things, um, I kind of prefer these types. But obviously they all work. And these look a little bit nicer because they're larger as well. Better presentation. All right guys, I'm gonna get to work. Um, not sure how much I can actually talk and work because I don't want to open my mouth when I'm cutting zoas in case they squirt because some zoas or pallies, they do squirt and you don't want to get those juice inside your body. Whether it's with an open cut or open your mouth. So I'm gonna shut up now. I tend to ramble.
Okay, so with these, I've had a lot of practice with the drop-off tank. Um, these are like individual polyps. I used to glue them straight onto rock, but this time we just glued on frag plug. Put a little dab of glue, put the zoas on it. I like to start with the biggest one in the middle first. And we'll add a little bit of instant set. Just a tiny bit. Okay, there you go. And then we're gonna... Actually, hindsight, probably shouldn't set it. I should probably add all the polyp first. So I added some glue surrounding that polyp, making sure to not put glue on top of the polyp. It's really important, otherwise they can't close up. Oh, they can't open up. And that's pretty much it. And some of them, you may get a little, little bit of a tissue. Like this one right here, there's a little trailing piece of tissue. That's because it's not a clean cut, it's more like a rip. So there's a little tissue. So I make sure to press those tissue into the super glue. And all, the, all the meantime, make absolutely sure that I do not use the, um, I don't get any super glue on the mouth where I, super, I could potentially super glue it shut. That's really, really important. And also want to make sure the tweezer is always clean at the tip, well, clean of super glue. And I always welcome a piece of polyp that comes with some um, sand grains on the side because it just makes it so much easier to stay on. And whenever I could, I don't want to glue the polyp directly, even though it is okay. So there's a little offset right there. We'll add a dab of glue on the other side right here and this is a small three polyp cluster right here I thought about maybe breaking it up into two separate frag plug so we got maybe like three and three polyp each but at the same time I'm like okay well I feel like it'll spread a little bit faster um, if it has, if it start out with more than three polyps, and I'm not honestly looking to sell them yet, I want to grow them out, get like a healthy colony going, and then we'll frag and I'll maybe sell or trade those. So that's that. That's one. Um, I think this other chaos, which is gonna be awesome, and we got two clusters of space monsters. So this one, same deal. This is already comes with a rock, so it's kind of nice. Just jam this right here, and good to go. All right, and then we got two space monster, at least I think it's space monster, unless this is like Pandora or something, then that's gonna suck. It's they're such fast growers. Looks nice under highlight though, it got a nice sh shine. That. So these longer polyp is a little bit trickier. Um, they're long because they're, they they drifted off the main colony and then they floated to like a corner or something where there's no light. That's why it's stretching out. And honestly, I don't really know how to. <laughs> I'll just I'll just glue it down like this and we'll see how it goes. It has a little bit of grain, a little sand grain right there. So hopefully that'll work to our advantage. But we'll see. We're just gonna. Play by year, so I'm just gonna go like this, man. Make sure you got a good grab, and then we'll instant set it. Yeah. Okay, so we got a piece of rock with some art of chaos here, and I am curious if I can break this up. For so this one, I guess I'll use some um, hammer, hammer and screwdriver. Be right back. Moments later. All right, we're back. So I broke that rock up. I'm getting pretty good with the hammer. And we got two pieces right here. There's like a single polyp, which is kind of <laughs> not even sure if I want to mount it to a separate one, but we got a nice little chunk of uh, other chaos right here. Let's continue with the Ecotech track plug because I really like it. Same deal. We'll dab some super glue gel in the middle for both of them, mount it this way. I 
Actually, maybe it doesn't. That's a weird. Show for a little bit. We'll set it. Set it. Set it. Good. All right, I think that should be it. Let's put them all back in the tank and let them acclimate a little bit. All right, so I kind of put all the frag down here because it is the light level that is used to. My frag rack's all the way in the back, a little bit higher, different light um, intensity, so I figure I'll leave it here first. Let them acclimate, and then we'll slowly move them up if they do well. One week later. Hey, what's up, Reefers? It has been about a week since I fragged these Oas. I just want to show you how it looks like right now. Instead of using a frag rack in the back, which brings them a little bit too close to the light, I keep them on the sand bed where the right next to the original colony is that from here. So I got a few polyps of the sour apple. It's doing well. You see that it really opened. Jawbreaker baby is right next to it too, but it's still on the original mini colony. So this is a new frag right here. Coming over here, we got the magicians. Looks like I got two polyps, uh, really healthy polyps. And next to it, I finally was able to frag off some of the other chaos, which I'm really happy about. I've been trying to start another colony using them. And sliding over here, this is the mystery polyps. I'm not too sure what this is. These are the ones that were kind of like floated off the side and um, I have no idea because they lost its color. I'm hoping that these will be uh, space monsters similar to this right here, but chances are these are gonna be uh, Pandoras. Now Pandoras, they look nice in highlights, but under low light, they turn brown, but they do spread really, really, really fast. So if you are considering Pandora Pallies, be careful. Coming over here, we got my last frag, which is also a other chaos. This is a single polyp, so that's gonna take a little bit more effort and time to grow out. Uh, back here, you'll notice, notice that this part is closed up. That is because the ammo crap, oh, you can see them right there. Uh, I actually moved one ammo crap from the uh, sump or refugium back into the display tank because I started noticing it bubble algae appearing. Before I had three ammo crabs and they're basically like down in the rock work, there's no bubble algae at all. They've been like picking them clean. But since the bubble algae is gone, it seems to have a little trouble with corals. Now I cannot really correlate it with ammo crabs, but I hear enough. So I'm taking no chances. I move all the ammo crab into the sump really easily just with my hand because they're not afraid of my fingers. But now obviously I have caught them once uh, with my hand and actually twice to bring them back up. And they maybe this little girl may be a little bit scared. Anyways, that's a little tension. But here are these Zoa frags, Zoa Pally frags. I got Other Chaos, I got Space Monster, Space Monster or Pandora, Other Chaos again, and Magician. Now this time I was hoping to get a little bit of um Sunny D's to spread them out, but unfortunately I didn't really find a good spot and I didn't really want to pull the whole rock out to frag, so maybe next time. So I need to frag some more corals in this tank. Uh, for example, I've been trying to get a piece of this big ladder and that's just a matter of just cutting it off and sticking a toothpick in and tying it down. Um, and also I need to frag this back a little bit because as you can see, the tip right there, right, it's already touching the Roosevelt anemone. That's why it's kind of all shrunk up. So that portion right there. I'm also trying to get some frags out of the Grandis because there is really running out of room. And I do notice that the Belly Mini Max somehow moved right there. It's kind of a weird spot. Another thing that I noticed this week, LPS just not doing too well in this tank. For example, the Space Invader. It was doing well up to this point, up to last week. And I started noticing that it started receding a little bit at the corner and through this week I just kept observing it just was like a it's not a rapid tissue necosis anti nah I'm not gonna try to use acronyms but the slower version STN uh, you see the base started receding a little bit uh, so I'm gonna about to do another I, uh, ICP test to make sure I got all the water parameter in check I've been running Corbisorb I've been running um, Polyfilter and I actually started running carbon in case it is um, chemical warfare between lead and corals or soft corals. So we'll see how that goes. Um, however, I will be moving the Space Invader to Camp Jimbo once again, uh, just to make sure it's in good health because I really, really treasure that piece. Uh, but in the meantime, everything else in the tank looks good. 
but there's something going on that LPS do not agree with in this tank at the moment. So we'll figure it out and then we'll slowly move things back into this tank. All right guys, that will do it for this week's video. Um, thank you for coming in and checking in and you can, as you can hear, the baby's crying in the background. So I will have to go see what Leon is up to. Talk to you guys next Sunday, 12.30 p.m. sharp. Bye. Wow.